Hi, I'm Gaitalyn Condi, and I am coming you from you. I'm coming to you live. I can't speak today from the Walmart parking lot in Linden, Utah. Um, many of you may be running around the grocery store like I was just a few minutes ago to get your last-minute Thanksgiving shopping done, and so I just wanted to um, be authentic with how my morning has gone. I don't know if many of you are feeling like you're running and crazy and trying to keep up with all the to-dos, but I'm so grateful to take a minute and share uh, a message with you today on Women of Worth, and I hope that it will touch your heart like it touched mine and that you will post where you're watching from and then share this video. I feel like it's the greatest example of what Thanksgiving and the holidays are all about. So many of you may know um, our team here at High Five Life. Pam Ackerman is a behind-the-scenes guru of so much of what goes on on High Five Life. It takes a lot to bring you live, inspirational video messages every single day. And we have an amazing team. We really are a family. Well, I was notified today about an amazing, um, I, I've said amazing 97 times, but you know, it's amazing. This is an amazing story. Pam's dear husband has been driving trucks for 21 years, millions of miles across the country. And for those of you that know truck drivers, um, it's a it's a hard career to have on the body, on the family, on the mind. It's a lot of time alone. But um, I loved hearing what her sweet husband, Daryl, has done for this Thanksgiving holiday. For those of you following the news, um, my hometown area, Yuba City, Chico, Paradise, is where I grew up. And in Northern California and in Southern California, there have been amazing, destructive fires uh, burning for a couple of weeks now. The whole city town of Paradise is gone. And my cousin lost his home, as did um, many, many thousands of people. And this is tragic no matter when this happens, but this time of year especially, it's challenging. So a lot of the help has been funneling through Yuba City, where I grew up, and Chico, just north of Yuba City. And um, for for those that are following the news, the destruction has been horrible. And our own brother, Corey Andrews, thanks for posting that as a reminder. He served his mission there. So we have this love and bond for this area of, of Northern California. So Bassett Furniture here in Utah um, and a few people involved with them, I will tag you in the post in the comments after this video is live and done, um, decided to get together and try to donate um, furniture to all of those that have lost everything. Um, literally a whole town is gone off the map and what a beautiful generous offering um, from Bassett Furniture and the people involved in making that happen but you can't just magically get all the furniture to California they needed a truck driver and um, I, I said I was gonna cry <laughs> but I'm gonna cry um, so our, our sweet Pam her husband and his company, Andrus Dist Trucking, I believe. I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong. Um, hey, listen, I even got the date my son was coming home um, from his mission wrong yesterday on a conversation I was having. So my brain is, is full probably like yours is at this time of year. So I will make sure that I tag the right people so that the right people get credit for this. Daryl heard about this and this trucking company that he works with has volunteered to get all of this donated furniture to the Paradise area, Chico area, Yuba City area. And so sweet Daryl is leaving and will not be with his family for Thanksgiving because he's decided to uh, be this good Samaritan right now and make sure this furniture gets to Yuba City. And um, so this is a shout out. I know we have a lot of Women of Worth viewers from Yuba City area. Um, I will be tagging Daryl. He's in need of a Thanksgiving dinner. And I know family and friends in that area are the most generous of people. And so you can reach out um, to Pam here on High Five Live and and make sure that Daryl has a place to eat his Thanksgiving dinner 
because he's cho chosen to sacrifice and help um, get this great gift um, to all the people in need. And so as I was talking with Pam this morning about this and the many people um, that were involved, from the furniture people to the people that donated other things to the trucking company to Daryl who's willing to drive, it reminded me of one of my favorite, favorite stories in the scriptures of the Good Samaritan. And I think President Uchtdorf, when he was President Uchtdorf, um, gave some uh, clarification on this story a few years ago. I'm sorry, I don't have the have the conference talk in front of me, but an awareness that when we tell the story of the Good Samaritan, um, that, you know, so many people, um, passed by and this man who was beaten and left by the side of the road. And when the Good Samaritan came to help, he didn't do everything. He didn't, um, he didn't stay and forget about his family back at home. He did what he could. He got him to a safe place. He got him um, taken care of so he had a place to recover. He paid the innkeeper. And then the innkeeper took over and took care of this person. Now, I don't know if the Good Samaritan was, you know, late for an appointment or had to cancel their Thanksgiving dinner you know, the equivalent of that to help this man. But oftentimes our opportunities to serve aren't convenient. Like Daryl, for his willingness to take time away from his family and to go um, on the road at this time of year and to make sure these donations get to the right place so that the people that are trying to rebuild their lives will have access to this new beautiful furniture. I think is an example of then the people in Yuba City and Chico area that are helping will then do their part. And when all of us do our part, it's amazing to see what happens and how much good can come. So today, as I was pondering on the sacrifice of my friend and the many other people behind the scenes, it re reminded me that sometimes we don't minister because we feel like we can't fix the whole problem. Like we want to go fight the fires and then we want to rebuild the houses and then we want to get the clothes and the food and, and we can't, we can't solve all the problems for these people in paradise or maybe the people in your own ward or in your own family, you want to fix everything that's happening in their lives and you can't. Um, but we all can do something. And so I, I just love the example of this good Samaritan truck driver today, the reminder that he's offering what he can offer and it's a big sacrifice. And it reminded me that the good Samaritan did what he could and it was out of his comfort zone. It was with a person that their communities didn't usually associate with one another. And he didn't, he didn't um, stay and abandon his whole life and all of his responsibilities and family, but he did what he could do. And I love that with small acts of service, um, I think the ministering program right now, it's such a perfect opportunity for us to learn to ponder, to uh, follow promptings and to do the small things. We don't need to sit around and wonder how we can fix all the problems for someone we care about, but we can do something. So my love goes out to the Ackerman family and to Daryl as he takes this um, gift of furniture to California to where my heart is and, and my love and prayers continue to go out for those that have lost so much um, with the fires in California. But my invitation is that we will each take an opportunity to find one thing we can do today. Uh, maybe you're at the grocery store like I was and there's someone that you feel prompted to help them with their groceries. Or, you know, uh, maybe it's someone in your neighborhood that you know is alone this holiday season and you keep pushing out the idea of texting them to invite them to your home for Thanksgiving. Don't push that prompting out. Even if they're, they're not going to be able to come or they already have plans, the idea that they have have an invitation is just going to make them feel loved and there's no loss in that. 
Um, I think one of the greatest things my sweet husband and I talked about this this morning is giving someone a hug and hug someone until they receive that hug because I think so often we feel um, alone, we feel disconnected from one another and we're just um, putting our heads down and plowing through and we get busy, I get busy and I get distracted and, and I don't stop to connect with the people around me and sometimes that's the greatest act of service we can give is to see someone, to hear them, to listen to their story, to to give them a hug. So happy Thanksgiving to all of those that are watching here on High Five Live and Women of Worth. Um, and for those that are not celebrating Thanksgiving, um, once again, thank you for joining us. And, and please post where you're watching from and share with us your ideas of, of what you're doing to, to create a ministering mentality and to be a good Samaritan. Um, it's the small things, and and as we do small things together, we do build Zion, and great things come to pass. So um, much love and gratitude for all of you for the support you've given this show and for how it has grown in the last year. For those that share High Five Live videos with their friends and family so that this community continues to grow. Um, I'm so grateful for each of you. I'm grateful for the High Five Live family that I'm a part of. And... Um, I hope that you feel the love of the Savior today, that that love will then prompt you to share uh, some love with someone next to you. And happy Thanksgiving.